In the near future, war rages across the Republic of Gilead, formerly the United States of America, and pollution has rendered 99% of the female population sterile. The country, under the rulership of a totalitarian patriarchal theocracy, is designed in such a way that only benefits the high class. The lower class members are separated from their families and are forced into taking up demeaning jobs. There is little or no justice, and the country's citizens are deprived of their fundamental right to freedom. The movie opens up with Kate, her husband Luke, and daughter Jill, attempting to cross over to Canada from the Republic of Gilead in an attempt to escape the hardships of the country and give their daughter a better life. Unfortunately for the family of three, they are unable to reach their promised land, as the Border Patrol soon discovers them. After a horrendous encounter with the Border Patrol officers that leaves Luke dead, Kate is taken into the system while Jill is nowhere to be found. After being arrested, Kate, alongside some other criminally convicted women, is transported to a holding facility where they are tested. When the results come in, Kate and a handful of women receive positive results. They are immediately separated from the others and are transported to another location. Here, Aunt Lydia, the woman in charge of the Red Center, an academy where handmaids are trained, meets them and explains that they will all become handmaids. She further reveals to the women that they were selected as handmaids primarily because they're part of the Republic of Gilead's 1% of fertile females. Apparently, pollution caused the majority of the country's women to become sterile, exempting these lucky few. After Aunt Lydia's introductory speech, the girls are transported in a bus to the Red Center. On the bus, Kate meets Moira, and the two become friends. The next day, Aunt Lydia instructs the fertile women on their duties as handmaids. They are to act as concubines to the wealthy but barren couples of the country, with the primary purpose of bearing children for them. Their duty is perceived to be an act of service to God and to their country, and their training comes with a good amount of scripted group chanting and ritualistic violence to discipline the girls. Not long after, Kate is taken into the home of the Commander, aka Fred, as his newest handmaid. The Commander's wife, Serena Joy, welcomes Kate into the house, but it's obvious she's displeased by her presence. Serena immediately lays down the rules for Kate to adhere strictly to. She then proceeds to ask Kate if she wants to have a baby, and the latter says yes, since that is her duty as a childbearing concubine. Serena approves of this and tells Kate they can work together. Soon, Kate is indoctrinated into the cult of handmaids and becomes an official handmaid who walks the streets in red garments. After the indoctrination ceremony, she returns to Fred's house, where Serena shows her to her room and gives her further instructions. Kate then receives her new name, Ofred, which means she belongs to Fred, aka the Commander, aka Mr. Inferiority Complex, because anyone who insists on being called the Commander has issues. That night, she dreams of her daughter, Jill. The next day, Serena and Kate have a short rite with the commander. He and Serena take turns reciting a scripture from the Old Testament and then pray that they would be blessed to have a child through Kate. At night, Kate and the commander have their first ceremony with Serena present. When Kate wakes up the next day, the kitchen staff gives her instructions on how she's to spend her day. She's to wait for a fellow handmaid named Off Glen. Together, the duo are to make a trip to the grocery store to pick up supplies for their respective houses. Later, while walking to and from the store, Kate and Off Glen do some light talk on the ongoings of the May Day War against a resistance movement in the country. They also encounter a pregnant handmaid on their way back, who everyone applauds for fulfilling fulfilling God's duty. As time passes, it becomes evident from Kate's behavior that she is unhappy with the turn her life has taken. One night, Kate is about to steal a pair of scissors, probably to commit the unthinkable. But she's soon discovered by Nick, the commander's chauffeur, who has been giving her flirtatious glances for a while. He doesn't report Kate. Instead, the both of them make out passionately, before Nick breaks the news to Kate that the commander needs her by 10 p.m. in his office the next night. When day breaks, Kate asks of Glenn what happened to the last of Fred, since there have been two other handmaids who served the commander before her. However, of Glenn claims that she doesn't know anything about it. Meanwhile, the commander inquires to his wife about what she thinks of their latest handmaid, to which Serena replies that she's better than the previous ones. That night, Nick escorts Kate to the commander's office. Thinking it's another ceremony, Kate covers herself with her veil. However, the commander locks his door, 
her and tells her to remove it because this meeting is not an official visit. He then reveals that he intends to get to know Kate better as a person because he thinks if he gets closer to her, she will be more at ease and become a better handmaid. The commander suggests that he and Kate play Scrabble, which they do. After Kate emerges as the winner of the game, the commander fires her ass because no one beats the commander at Scrabble. Just kidding. The commander offers her some strawberries as a reward, claiming that he knew she would win the game because she was a librarian. He then informs her that he will go to the capital for a week, and while he is away, Kate shouldn't forget him. The next day, Serena invites Kate outside to assist her with gardening. She engages Kate in a discussion and tells her that the only reason she gets handmaids is that she wants a baby who would make her life whole. Serena then lets Kate know that she's aware of the fact that Kate has a daughter. When Kate asks if Serena knows what happened to Jill after she was captured, Serena says she's equally clueless and will try to find out. Three months after Kate's residence in the commander's house, she's still not pregnant. This makes the family anxious, and Nick drives Kate to a hospital to run some tests. Meanwhile, Kate's doctor tells her that there's absolutely nothing wrong with her. However, he knows the commander and suspects that he's the one who's sterile because he has tried twice before to have a child. When Kate asks if they also test men for sterility, the doctor doctor says they don't, and that Kate will get the blame if it doesn't work out. Surprisingly, he offers to help Kate by impregnating her himself. The doctor says that no one will know it's not the commander's child, and that he has helped many other women get pregnant this way. Kate politely declines, but he presses on by warning her of the consequences if she doesn't become pregnant. When he begins to make further advancements, Kate threatens to scream for help, and as a result, he finally lets her go. Back at the commander's house, Kate is given one more month to get pregnant, or else she'll be up for reassessment. In the next scene, the commander and Kate play a game of cards, and Kate is the winner once again. When she asks for her prize, the commander gives her a stash of magazines that were supposed to be burned because such material is illegal. Meanwhile, Kate asks the commander to do her a favor by giving her hand lotion because she needs it for her dry skin. At first, he obliges, but after a while, he rethinks and mentions that his wife might smell it on her and get furious. When Kate argues that she's barely even close enough to Serena for her to notice scent, the commander agrees to give her hand lotion, on the condition that she doesn't use it on the nights of their ceremony. During the next ceremony, the commander gets carried away and is about to touch Kate sensually. However, Serena immediately stops him, fearing that he might be more attracted to Kate than her. Later that night, Kate confronts the commander and tells him to never try touching her like that again, because Serena will get angry and send her off to the colonies, where the standard of living is unbearable. Kate then uses the opportunity to ask what happened to the last of Fred. The commander reveals that she couldn't conceive, so she committed the unthinkable. Hearing this, Kate gets taken aback, and she quickly leaves the office. Meanwhile, Serena is getting impatient while waiting for Kate to conceive. One day, she calls Kate over to talk on the issue. Kate asks if she has discovered anything about her daughter, but Serena says she hasn't. Serena then asks Kate if she has had any pregnancy signs, and the latter says no. As they keep talking, Serena points out that Kate's time is running out. She admits that her husband might be infertile and suggests that Kate should sleep with another man so she can become pregnant. Kate reminds Serena that she would be killed for that, but Serena brushes it off by saying women do it all the time. When Kate asks her who she has in mind, Serena tells her Nick is a good fit for the job because he's loyal to them. Eventually, Kate agrees to the idea, and the two decide to keep it a secret. That night, Kate and Nick get intimate, and this marks the start of their affair. The next day, Serena confesses to Kate that Jill is alive. Apparently, she had known all along and was hoarding the information from Kate. She then gives Kate a photograph of her daughter, which makes her emotional. When she inquires about Jill's location, Serena merely assures her that she's in good hands and is well taken care of. Kate asks when she can see her, but Serena breaks the sad news to her that it's impossible because Jill wouldn't even recognize her as her birth mother. That night, Kate goes to Nick's room to confide in him. She tells him that she needs to see her daughter. Nick knows her wish can't be granted, so he decides to comfort her instead while she mourns. Some days later, all the handmaids watch the extraordinary event of their fellow handmaid of Walder giving birth. Serena also witnesses the event and becomes more impatient, telling Kate to get pregnant soon. Meanwhile, of Glenn advises Kate to study the commander and get to know everything about him, claiming that this would be helpful. The next time Kate and the commander meet at the commander's office, Kate mentions that the commander is a mystery to her and she would love to get to know him better. They then have small talk and Kate uses the opportunity 
opportunity to study the commander and his thought process. Sometime later, all the women attend an event where they witness the verdict of a handmaid who was found guilty of seduction and fornication with a medical staff member. According to the handmaid's training, situations like these are inevitably the woman's fault, and her punishment is death. Everyone watches in delight as the other handmaids pull the rope that eliminates the handmaid in the public center. Next, another man is brought in and convicted for the assault of a pregnant handmaid. All of the handmaids in the center are furious, and they eventually beat him to death. However, Kate and of Glenn seem to be the only sane women there, and of Glenn reveals that she is a part of the resistance. She then tells Kate that the man wasn't guilty. Instead, he was one of their best men. As they walk back to their houses, of Glenn asks Kate what the commander wants from her, since he sees her privately. Of Glenn then reveals that the commander is the security chief, making him one of the resistance's biggest targets. Almost immediately, a vehicle explodes behind the women, and a group of armed men start shooting sporadically. The men are staff members of the May Day Resistance, so they spare all the handmaids in the area. Following this, Of Glenn tells Kate that the resistance may need her to kill the commander, as he has been their main obstacle for a democratic state. Kate is skeptical about the plan at first, but when she realizes that it's her only chance to meet her daughter, she agrees. Later, when Kate returns to the commander's office, she is surprised when he tells her he's taking her out and gives her a fancy black dress and boa to wear. Nick is their chauffeur, and while in the car, Kate has to lie down on the floor during checkpoints, because according to the commander, wives aren't allowed where they're going. When they arrive at the destination, which is revealed to be an illegal nightclub, the commander introduces Kate to everyone as Mary Lou. They both dance, have drinks, and sleep together before eventually leaving. Once they get back home, Kate Kate goes to Nick's room and tells him that she's pregnant for him and isn't going to give up their baby to the commander and his wife, who she detests. She then tells Nick that she wants to escape and asks him to join her. When Kate returns to her room to rest, she finds on her dressing table a note from Of Glenn saying, 10 p.m. tomorrow, with a knife beside it. The next day, Kate goes to meet with Of Glenn to tell her that she found the note, but when the girl turns, Kate realizes that the Of Glenn she knew has been replaced. When she asks the unfamiliar woman where Of Glenn is, the lady claims to be Of Glenn. Meanwhile, Serena finds out that Kate has been sleeping with her husband outside the ceremonies. She confronts Kate about it and insults her before storming out of the house. By 10 p.m. that night, Kate prepares herself to eliminate the commander. When she enters his office, he's about to fire a gun at her, but when he sees it's Kate, he lowers his guard. Kate then uses the opportunity to kill him. Immediately, Nick and some other police officers arrive at the house and arrest her. However, the arrest is a ruse because the police officers are actually undercover Mayday resistance who help Kate escape. In the next scene, Nick and Kate have an emotional farewell because Nick has to return to join the Mayday resistance. He tells Kate that he'll keep sending her messages and she should run away and take care of their child until he returns. The episode ends with Kate hiding safely in the mountains, thinking about her first daughter, Jill, while also awaiting Nick's baby's arrival. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.